The Deccan Sultanates were five dynasties that ruled late medieval Indian kingdoms, namely, Bijapur, Golconda, Ahmadnagar, Bidar, and Berar in southwestern India. The Deccan Sultanates were located on the Deccan Plateau, between the Krishna River and the Vindhya Range. These kingdoms became independent during the breakup of the Bahmani Sultanate. In 1490, Ahmadnagar declared independence, followed by Bijapur and Berar in the same year. Golconda became independent in 1518 and Bidar in 1528. The five sultanates were of diverse origin. Ahmadnagar Sultanate and Berar Sultanate were of Hindu lineage, Ahmadnagar being Brahmin Hindu and Berar being Canaris Hindu. Bidar Sultanate were of former Turkic slave, Bijapur Sultanate were of former Georgian Oghuz Turkic slave, and Golconda Sultanate were of Turkmen origin. Although generally rivals, they did ally against the Vijayanagara Empire in 1565, permanently weakening Vijayanagar in the Battle of Talakota. In 1574, after a coup in Berar, Ahmadnagar invaded and conquered it. In 1619, Bidar was annexed by Bijapur. The Sultanates were later conquered by the Mughal Empire. Berar was stripped from Ahmadnagar in 1596. Ahmadnagar was completely taken between 1616 and 1636, and Golconda and Bijapur conquered by Aurangzeb's 1686-87 campaign. Ahmadnagar Sultanate Ahmadnagar Sultanate was founded by Malik Ahmad Nizam Shah I, who was the son of the Nizam ul Mulk Malik Hassan Bari, a Hindu Brahmin from Bijanagar or Bijanagar originally named Timapa. Malik Ahmad Nizam Shah I was the governor of Janur, after defeating the Bahmani army led by General Jahangir Khan on May 28, 1490 declared independence and established the Nizam Shahi dynasty rule over the Sultanate of Ahmadnagar. The territory of the Sultanate was located in the northwestern Deccan, between the Sultanates of Gujarat and Bijapur. Initially his capital was in Janur. In 1494, the foundation was laid for the new capital Ahmadnagar. Malik Ahmed Shah after several attempts, secured the great fortress of Dalatabad in 1499. After his death in 1510, his son Burhan, a boy of seven was installed in his place. Burhan Shah I died in Ahmadnagar in 1553. He left six sons, of whom Hussein succeeded him. After the death of Hussein Shah I in 1565, his minor son Mortaza ascended the throne. During his minority, his mother Kanzada Humayun Sultana ruled as a regent for several years. Mortaza Shah annexed Berar in 1574. On his death in 1588, his son Miran Hussain ascended the throne. But his reign could last only a little more than ten months as he was poisoned to death. Ismail, a cousin of Miran Hussain was raised to the throne, but the actual power was in the hands of Jamal Khan, the leader of the Dakani group in the court. Jamal Khan was killed in the Battle of Roankht in 1591 and soon Ismail Shah was also captured and confined by his father Burhan, who ascended the throne as Burhan Shah. After the death of Burhan Shah his eldest son Ibrahim ascended the throne. Ibrahim Shah died only after a few months in the battle with Bijapur Sultanate. Soon, Chand Bibi, the aunt of Ibrahim Shah, proclaimed Bahadur, the infant son Ibrahim Shah as the rightful sultan and she became the regent of him. In 1596, Mughal attack led by Murad was repulsed bravely by Chand Bibi. After the death of Chand Bibi in July, 1600 Ahmadnagar was conquered by the Mughals and Bahadur Shah was imprisoned. But Malik Ambar and other Ahmadnagar officials defied the Mughals and declared Mortaza Shah II as Sultan in 1600 at a new capital Paranda. Malik Ambar became Prime Minister and Vakil as Sultanate of Ahmadnagar. Later, the capital was shifted first to Janur and then to a new city Kadki later Aurangabad. After the death of Malik Ambar, his son Fath Khan surrendered to the Mughals in 1633 and handed over the young Nizam Shahi ruler Hussein Shah, who was sent as a prisoner to the fort of Gwalior. But soon, Shahaji with the assistance of Bijapur, placed an infant scion of the Nizam Shahi dynasty, Mortaza on the throne and he became the regent. In 1636 Aurangzeb, then Mughal viceroy of Deccan finally annexed the Sultanate to the Mughal Empire after defeating Shahaji. <inaudible> Rulers Malik Ahmad Nizam Shah I 1490-1510 
Burhan Nizam Shah I 1510-1553 Hussain Nizam Shah I 1553-1565 Mortaza Nizam Shah 1565-1588 Miran Nizam Hussain 1588-1589 Ismail Nizam Shah 1589-1591 Burhan Nizam Shah II 1591 to 1595 Ibrahim Nizam Shah 1595 to 1596 Ahmad Nizam Shah II 1596 Bahadur Nizam Shah 1596 to 1600 Mortaza Nizam Shah II 1600 to 1610 Burhan Nizam Shah III 1610 to 1631 Hussein Nizam Shah II 1631-1633 Mortaza Nizam Shah III 1633-1636 Barar Sultanate Barar Sultanate was founded by Fadila Imad ul Mulk, who was born a Canaris Hindu, but was captured as a boy by Bahmani forces on an expedition against the Vijayanagara Empire and reared as a Muslim. During the disintegration of Bahmani Sultanate, Fadila Imad ul Mulk, governor of Barar, declared independence in 1490 and founded the Imad Shahi dynasty of Barar Sultanate. He established the capital at Achalpur. Gavalgad and Narnala were also fortified by him. He was succeeded by his eldest son Allah ud Din after his death in 1504. In 1528, Allah ud Din resisted the aggression of Ahmadnagar with the help from Bahadur Shah, Sultan of Gujarat. The next ruler, Darya first tried to align with Bijapur to prevent aggression of Ahmadnagar, but was unsuccessful. Later, he helped Ahmadnagar on three occasions against Bijapur. After his death in 1562, his infant son Burhan succeeded him to the throne. But in 1574, Tufal Khan, a minister of Burhan usurped Burhan Imad Shah, the last ruler of Imad Shahi dynasty and in the same year Murtaza I, Sultan of Ahmadnagar annexed it to his sultanate. Burhan, along with Tufal Khan and his son Shamshir ul Mulk were taken to Ahmadnagar and confined to a fortress where all of them subsequently died. Rulers. <inaudible> <inaudible> Fadila Imad ul Mulk 1490-1504 Allah ud Din Imad Shah 1504-1530 Darya Imad Shah 1530-1562 Burhan Imad Shah 1562-1574 Tufal Khan 1574 Bidar Sultanate Bidar was the smallest of the five Deccan Sultanates. Qasim Barid, founder of the Barid Shahi dynasty joined the service of Bahmani ruler Mahmud Shah Bahmani as a Sar Nabat but later became Mir Jumla of the Bahmani Sultanate. In 1492, he became de facto ruler of Bahmani Sultanate, though Sultan Mahmud Shah Bahmani remained as the formal ruler. After his death in 1504, his son Amir Barad controlled the administration of the Bahmani Sultanate. In 1528, with the flight of the last Bahmani ruler Kalimullah from Bidar, Amir Barad became practically independent. Amir Barad was succeeded by his son Ali Barad, who was the first to assume the title of Shah. He participated in the Battle of Talakota. He was fond of poetry and calligraphy. The last ruler of the Bidar Sulatante Amir Barad Shah III was defeated in 1619, and the Sultanate was annexed to Bijapur Sultanate. Rulers Qasim Barad I 1492-1504 Amir Barad I 1504-1542 Ali Barad Shah 1542-1580 Ibrahim Barad Shah 1580-1587 Qasim Barad Shah II 1587-1591 Ali Barad Shah II 1591 Amir Barad Shah II 1591-1600 
Mirza Ali Barad Shah III 1600 to 1609 Amir Barad Shah III 1609 to 1619 Topic Bijapur Sultanate The Bijapur Sultanate was ruled by the Adil Shahi dynasty from 1490 to 1686 the Adil Shahis were originally provincial rulers of the Bahmani Sultanate, but with the breakup of the Bahmani state after 1518, Ismail Adil Shah established an independent sultanate, one of the five Deccan Sultanates. The Bijapur Sultanate was located in southwestern India, straddling the Western Ghats range of southern Maharashtra and northern Karnataka. Ismail Adil Shah and his successors embellished the capital at Bijapur with numerous monuments. The Adil Shahis fought the empire of Vijayanagar, which lay to the south across the Tungabhadra River, and fought the other sultanates as well. The sultanates combined forces to deliver a decisive defeat to Vijayanagar in 1565, after which the empire broke up. Bijapur seized control of the Raichur Dobe from Vijayanagar. In 1619, the Adil Shahis conquered the neighboring sultanate of Bidar, which was incorporated into their realm. In the 17th century, the Marathas revolted successfully under Shivaji's leadership and captured major parts of the Sultanate like Bijapur. The weakened Sultanate was conquered by Aurangzeb in 1686 with the fall of Bijapur, bringing the dynasty to an end. Rulers <inaudible> 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 Yusuf Adil Shah 1490–1510 Ismail Adil Shah 1510 to 1534 Malu Adil Shah 1534 to 1535 Ibrahim Adil Shah I 1535 minus 1558 Ali Adil Shah I 1558 minus 1580 Ibrahim Adil Shah II 1580 to 1627 Muhammad Adil Shah 1627 to 1656 Ali Adil Shah II 1656 to 1672 Sikandar Adil Shah 1672 to 1686 Topic <laughs> Golconda Sultanate The dynasty's founder Sultan Kali Qutb ul Mulk migrated to Delhi with some of his relatives and friends in the beginning of the 16th century Later he migrated south to Deccan and served Bahmani Sultan Muhammad Shah. He conquered Golconda and became the governor of Telangana region in 1518, after the disintegration of the Bahmani Sultanate into the five Deccan Sultanates. Soon after, he declared independence from the Bahmani Sultanate, took title Qutb Shah, and established Qutb Shahi dynasty of Golconda. The dynasty ruled for 171 years, until the Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb's army conquered Golconda in 1687. Rulers Sultan Kali Qutb ul Mulk 1518-1543 Jamshid Kali Qutb Shah 1543-1550 Subhan Kali Qutb Shah 1550 Ibrahim Kali Qutb Shah 1550 to 1580 Muhammad Kali Qutb Shah 1580 to 1611 Sultan Muhammad Qutb Shah 1611 to 1626 Abdullah Qutb Shah 1626 to 1672 Abul Hasan Qutb Shah 1672 to 1687 Decline Cultural contributions The rulers of five Deccan sultanates had a number of cultural contributions to their credit in the fields of art, music, literature and architecture. An important cultural contribution of the Deccan sultanates is the development of Deccani language. Dakani, which started growing under the Bahamani rulers, developed into an independent spoken and literary language during this period by continuously drawing resources from Arabic Persian, Marathi, Kannada and Telugu. 
This language later became known as Dakani Urdu to distinguish it from the North Indian Urdu. The Dakani miniature painting, which flourished in the courts of Ahmadnagar, Bijapur and Golconda is another major cultural contribution of the Deccan Sultanates. The architectural splendors of Deccan like Char Manar and Gol Gumbaz belong to this period. The religious tolerance displayed by the Nizam Shahi, Adil Shahi and Qutb Shahi rulers is also worthy of mention. Ahmadnagar Sultanate The Nizam Shahi rulers of Ahmadnagar enthusiastically patronized miniature painting. The earliest surviving paintings are found as the illustrations of a manuscript Tarif i Hussain Shahi, c. which is now in Bharata Itihasa Samshadaka Mandala, Pune. A miniature painting of Mortaza Nizam Shah c. is in Bibliothèque nationale of Paris, while another one is in State Library, Rampur. Three other paintings, The Running Elephant in an American Private Collection, The Royal Picnic in the India Office Library, London and The Young Prince Embraced by a Small Girl in the Edwin Binney Third Collection in the San Diego Museum most probably belong to the period of Burhan Nizam Shah II. Amongst the monuments of Nizam Shahi rulers in Ahmadnagar, the earliest one is the tomb of Ahmad Shah I Bari 1509 at the center of Bagh Ruza, a garden complex. The Jami Masjid also belonged to the same period. Mecca Masjid, built in 1525 by Rumi Khan, a Turkish artillery officer of Burhan Nizam Shah I has originality in its design. The Kotla complex constructed in 1537 as a religious educational institution. The impressive Farah Bagh was the centerpiece of a huge palatial complex completed in 1583. The other monuments in Ahmadnagar of the Nizam Shahi period are Du Bodhi Chira, Tomb of Sharjah Khan, 1562, Damri Masjid, 1568, and the Tomb of Rumi Khan, 1568. The Jami Masjid, 1615, in Kirki, Aurangabad, and the Chini Mahal inside the Dalatabad Fort were constructed during the late Nizam Shahi period, 1600 to 1636. The tomb of Malik Ambar in Kutabad is another impressive monument of this period. The Kali Masjid of Jalna 1578 and the tomb of Dilawar Khan 1613 in Rajgaranagar also belong to the Nizam Shahi period. During the reign of Ahmad Shah I Bari, his keeper of imperial records, Dalapati wrote an encyclopedic work, the Nri Simha Prasada, where he mentioned his overlord as Nizamsaha. It is a notable instance of the religious tolerance of the Nizam Shahi rulers. Barar Sultanate The ruined palace of House Katora, 3 km, west of Achalpur is the only notable surviving Imad Shahi monument. Bidar Sultanate The main architectural activities of the Barid Shahi rulers are the garden tombs. The tomb of Ali Barid Shah 1577 is the most notable monument in Bidar. The tomb consists of a lofty domed chamber, open on four sides located in the middle of a Persian four-square garden. The Ranjan Mahal in Bidar, built during the reign of Ali Barid Shah is a complete and exquisitely decorated courtly structure. Other important monuments in Bidar during this period are Tomb of Qasim II and Kali Masjid, an important class of metalwork known as Bidrai originated from Bidar. These metalworks were carried out on black metal mainly zinc, which were inlaid with designs of silver and brass and sometimes copper. <laughs> Bijapur Sultanate The Adil Shahi rulers contributed greatly in the fields of art, architecture, literature and music. Bijapur developed into a cosmopolitan city, and it attracted many scholars, artists, musicians, and Sufi saints from Rome, Iran, Iraq, Turkey and Turkestan. Amongst the major architectural works in Bijapur Sultanate, one of the earliest is the unfinished Jami Masjid started by Ali Adil Shah I in 1576. It has an arcaded prayer hall with fine aisles supported on massive piers has an impressive dome. Most splendid monument built during the reign of Ibrahim II was the Ibrahim Ruza which was originally planned as a tomb for Queen Taj Sultana but later converted into the tomb for Ibrahim Adil Shah II and his family. 
This complex, completed in 1626, consists of a paired tomb and a mosque. The tomb is an exquisite structure with delicate carvings. Ibrahim II also planned to construct a new twin city to Bijapur, Norispur. The construction began in 1599 but never completed. The greatest monument in Bijapur is Gol Gumbaz, the mausoleum of Muhammad Adil Shah. The diameter of the hemispherical dome is 44 meters. Externally. This monument was completed in 1656. The other important architectural works of this period are the Chini Mahal, the Jal Mandir, the Sat Manzil, the Gagun Mahal, the Anand Mahal, and the Asar Mahal in Bijapur, Kum Maji, 16 km from Bijapur, the Panhala Fort, and Naldurg, 45 km from Solapur. Persian artists of Adil Shahi court have left a rare treasure of miniature paintings, some of which are well preserved in Europe's great museums. The earliest miniature paintings are ascribed to the period of reign of Ali Adil Shah I. The most significant of them are the paintings in the manuscript of Nujam ul Ulam, Stars of Science, 1570, kept in Chester Beatty Library, Dublin. The manuscript consists about 400 miniature paintings. Two other illustrated manuscripts which can be attributed to the period of Ali Adil Shah I are Jawahar al Muzakat i Muhammadi in British Library, which contains 48 paintings, and a Marathi commentary of Sarangadeva's Sangeeta Ratnakara kept in the Museum of City Palace, Jaipur, which contains four paintings. The maximum number of miniature paintings came down to us belong to the period of reign of Sultan Ibrahim Adil Shah II. The most celebrated painter of his court probably was Maulana Farak Hussain. The miniature paintings of this period are preserved in Bikaner Palace, Bidleyan Library, Oxford, British Museum, London, Victoria and Albert Museum, London, Musée Guimet, Paris, Academy of Sciences, St. Petersburg and Napstrek Museum, Prague. Under the Adil Shahi rulers many literary works were published in Dakani. Ibrahim Adil Shah II himself wrote a book of songs, Kitab i Noras in Dakani. This book contains a number of songs whose tunes are set to different ragas and raginis. In his songs, he praised Hindu goddess Sarasvati along with the Prophet and Sufi saint Hazrat Khwaja Banda Nawaz Jesudaras. A unique tambur lute known as Modi Khan was in his possession. The famous Persian poet laureate Zuhori was his court poet. The Mashaira poetic symposium was born in the Bijapur court and later travelled north. The Adil Shahi kings were known for tolerance towards Hindus and non-interference in their religious matters. They employed Hindus to high posts, especially as the officers who deal with the accounts and the administration, since the documents pertaining to the both were maintained in Marathi. <laughs> Golconda Sultanate One of the earliest architectural achievements of the Qutb Shahi dynasty is the fortified city of Golconda. The Jami Masjid 1518 erected by Kali Qutb ul Mulk, the tomb of Muhammad Kali Qutb Shah 1611, the tomb of Muhammad Qutb Shah 1626, and the Mosque of Hayat Bakshi Begum 1666 are the notable monuments in Golconda. Muhammad Kali Qutb Shah decided to shift the capital to Hyderabad, 8 km east of Golconda. Here, he constructed the most original monument in the Deccan, the Char Minar in the heart of the new city. This monument completed in 1591, has four minarets of 56 meters. Height. The construction of the Mecca Masjid, located at the immediate south of Char Minar was started in 1617 during the reign of Muhammad Qutb Shah but completed only in 1693. The other important monuments of this period are the Toli Masjid and the Jami Masjid at Gandaikota. The Qutb Shahi rulers were great patrons of literature and invited many scholars, poets, historians and Sufi saints from Iran to settle in their sultanate. The most important contribution of the Golconda Sultanate in the field of literature is the development of Dakani language. Ibrahim Kali Qutb Shah patronized Telugu literature also. Muhammad Kali Qutb Shah was not only a great patron of art and literature but also a poet of high order. He wrote in Dakani, Persian and Telugu and left an extensive Diwan volume in Dakani, known as Kuliyat i Muhammad Kali Qutb Shah. Apart from the praise of God and the Prophet, he also wrote on nature, love and contemporary social life. 
The Qutb Shahi rulers invited many Persian artists like Sheikh Abbasi and Muhammad Zaman in their court, which left a profound impact of different phases of Iranian art on the miniature paintings of this period. The earliest miniature paintings like the 126 illustrations in the manuscript of Anwar i Saheli c. 1550-1560 in the Victoria and Albert Museum, London and the illustrations in Sindbad Nama in the India Office Library, London and Shuran and Khusrau in the Kutabaks Library, Patna most probably belong to the period of reign of Ibrahim Kali Qutb Shah. First six of the total eight illustrations in the manuscript of Kuliyat i Muhammad Kali Qutb Shah c. 1590-1600 in Salar Young Museum, Hyderabad are masterpieces. The five illustrations in a manuscript of the Dewan i Hafiz c. in the British Museum, London belong to the period of reign of Abdullah Qutb Shah. The most outstanding surviving Golconda painting probably is the procession of Sultan Abdullah Qutb Shah riding an elephant c. 1650 in Saltikov Shitshedron State Public Library, St. Petersburg. Their painting style lasted even after the dynasty was extinct. It evolved into the Hyderabad style. Qutb Shahi rulers appointed Hindus in important administrative posts. Ibrahim Kali Qutb Shah appointed Murari Rao as Peshwa, second to only Mir Jumla Prime Minister. See also Chand Bibi Battle of Talakota Muslim conquest in the Indian subcontinent Notes <laughs>